So this is one out of three YouTube um, movie to um, explain some of the detail that uh, were previously published in our um, neuron paper in 2018. And so we made this video following a comment, uh, again, published in Neuron. So the first of this uh, YouTube video is about a method of deconvolution of dynamic, and the goal of this is to study the voltage in neuronal microdomains. So I would like to um, make some precision that all of the software are available in our um, bioneumetrics website www.bioneumetrics.org. So what is the method of deconvolution of the dye? So the method is decomposed into two, four steps. The first step is to um, calculate, to compute what is called the kernel. And this will be done by comparing the voltage monitored by electrophysiological recording in the summer and to compare it with the voltage dye signal. The second step consists in precisely computing this kernel based on the recording of the summer. Then we will apply this deconvolution kernel to voltage dyes recorded in the enritic spine where the direct electrical measurement is not possible with these classical electrodes. And finally, I will explain how to deconvolve the signal dyes from, uh, recorded from these uh, dendritic spines. So this is the classical uh, framework to uh, record um, electrical signal in neuronal cell using a, a, a classical um, patch pipette. And uh, this is um, uh, recorded directly in the soma where you can see here the electrical signal following um, a synaptic stimulation. And this is the time response as recorded in the, in the SOMA with the following time scale in uh, milliseconds and in millivolt. So a couple of years ago, a new technology appeared where voltage dye could be inserted in the plasma membrane. And this voltage dye could emit signal upon a change of voltage. So th this is the example of the arc light that has been uh, published um, a couple of years ago. And upon a step function going from minus 100 to zero millivolt, we can see here that the time response is much slower. So going from uh, hundreds spanning the, the, the time of hundreds of milliseconds. And again, going from a, a step response that goes this time from zero to uh, minus 100, you can see here how the um, die response, the, the time response is much uh, slower than this uh, step function. So, how to compare the voltage dynamics? So first of all, let's look at the region of interest, which consists here in the SOMA. This is delimited by this red, um, red, red curve. And if we use the patch pipette for this uh, synaptic stimulation, we obtain in the SOMA this um, black time series response while the same signal recorded from the voltage die give this green response. And so we are interested in the mathematical question, which is what is the transformation that can lead this slow time response into this fast time response? If we know how to do it for the summer, then we will we will be able to apply it for a dendritic spine where this uh, a curve is not available, but since we'll have the kernel of this deconvolution, we will be able to find this fast time response as revealed by the classical electrophysiological recordings. So the method 
consist in uh, studying this uh, deconvolution, which is called a, a causal deconvolution, where the fluorescence dye is actually the uh, convolution product of a kernel multiplied by the voltage response, which is the integral from 0 to t of k of t minus s, v of s. And we are going to use as the kernel k of t, which is uh, an exponential decay multiplied by t. And here there are two constant to be calibrated, the time constant tau and the amplitude a. So how uh, are we going to uh, resolve this, uh, um, th this equation? Before doing this, I would like to um, uh, explain one step. This step is important to prevent any amplification of fluctuation in the deconvolution procedure. So for this, before uh, we do this uh, uh, deconvolution, we are going to fit the die response, f of, capital F of t here, by a family of curve which, with five parameters, t to power alpha, multiplied by the sum of two exponentials. And this step is important to prevent the amplification of uh, fluctuations. So, suppose again we have these equations to be resolved. We fit the voltage die capital F of t with this family of function. And how we are going to solve this, we are going to Fourier transform both sides of the equation so that F is not going to be equal to, so the, f the first, the Fourier transform is capital F, which is given explicitly here as the sum of uh, Laplace transform. This is a Laplace transform, the Fourier transform, of the kernel. And what is interesting is that in the Fourier space, space the, um, the, the, the Fourier transform is just the multiplication of k multiplied by h, and, and thus we can resolve h of s, which is a Fourier transform of the voltage, exactly. So that by inverting this uh, Fourier, um, Fourier expression, we obtain the exact expression of the voltage as a function of the parameter of the fit, which has to be performed on the voltage dies. So let's come back to our problem. Now we would like to calibrate the kernel K of T, and we have now these two curves. And to do this, um, Using the method, we approximate the voltage response by these uh, five parameters. And this is the result. So when we do this deconvolution, we find that the green curve is transformed into the uh, continuous uh, uh, green curve. And you see the, uh, an almost perfect ma matching from zero to about 400 um, in milliseconds. And for this, we found that an optimal time scale is this 50 millisecond, and the amplitude here could be adjusted so that the maximum uh, fit the, the, the maximum of the, um, the signal recorded from the um, patch pipette. Now, how are we going to apply this to dendritic spines? So, Using the arc lights indicator, we define two regions of interest, R1 and R2. Following a glutamate and caging stimulations, we have recorded the uh, fluorescent in these two regions, and it is shown here as a function of time. You can see here the fluctuations of the signal, the changes in the signal, in region uh, 2 and in region 1. So we have now, again, the paradigm of the experiments. We engage here. We have now these two regions. And so we have now the response in the spine, in the dendrite, and in the soma. 
And now we would like to extract the voltage from the, flu from the fluorescent response. And we are going to use the hour calibration procedure. So for this, we are going to uh, decompose the deconvolution into three steps. The first step is to remove the fluctuations that we have found in these two regions of interest. So for this, we are going to use what is called the classical savitsky gole uh, filter. And this is here the result. You have here in region one, the uh, large fluctuation in, in the sine curve. And it is uh, fitted to remove the noise by this um, blue continuous curve. This is in the head and in the dendrite, you can see the result of, the simi of a similar procedure. Now, once we are done with step one, we can move to step two, which is what we have already discussed, which is the approximation or the fitting of the response by this analytical expression. And so you can see here the results in uh, the dashed line for each uh, region of interest. You can see the comparison between uh, the result of the, of the savitsky gole filter in these two regions of interest. Next, so we are now going to go to a step three. Once we have this fit, we use this deconvolution procedure where we have the analytical expression again given here and um, all of the details are provided in the supplementary information of our neuron paper 2018. And you can see here the result. So though that before the deconvolution and those are the signals after the deconvolution. And so you can see how you, we recover the uh, time scale. And I would like to insist here that the procedure amplify. So that's why we needed these steps to prevent any small fluctuation to be amplified that could corrupt this uh, um, direct response. So now that um, we have uh, deconvolved this is in the soma the um, the kernel we have found the kernel we have applied this kernel to a dendritic spine where we have seen here that the dye response in this two dashed um, red and blue curve how they are transformed into this continuous <laughs> curve here and this is the result of the deconvolution um, giving us this uh, voltage response. So to conclude, uh, I have presented you here our deconvolution uh, procedure. Um, the, 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 the exact uh, and precise mathematical steps um, are presented in the supplementary information of this um, uh, neuron paper where the first author is uh, Jérôme Cartier. The software are available at our um, website, bionumetrics.org. So once this um, step has been performed, we can now use this um, time series to extract more information, for example, about the resistance of the spine neck. And this will be the purpose of our second YouTube uh, video. Thank you for watching.